जाए नमाचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चौथन प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत के दाधार श्री बासरी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुन राधा कुन की गोवर्धान की जाए वृंदावन धाम में की जाए मायापुर नबरी धाम में की जाए जगन्नाथ पूरी धाम में की जाए गंग माई की जाए यमुन माई की जाए तुलसी देवी की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए श्री लाभ बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जाए All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees, and all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <clears throat> Sorry. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सहा चिंतयान इथम अथ अश्विना यथा मुने सुत उक्ता निवृति दक्षका अखया सहा साधु मेने न चिरे नाम दक्षका अनलम प्रसक्त विरक्ति कारणम सॉरी सचिंतयाश्विनोद्यता मुने सुक्त निरतिष्ठक्षाख्या साधु मेने न चरे न थक्षका नलम प्रसक्त विरक्ति कारण सचिंतयान इथम थाश्विनोद्यता मुने सुक्त निरतिष्ठक्षाख्या साधु मेना न चरे न थक्षका नलम प्रसक्त विरक्ति कारण सचिंतयान इथम अथारोष्ण सॉरी सचिंतयान इथम अथाश्विनोद्यता मुने सुक्त निरतिष्ठक्षाख्या सुसाधु मेने न चिरे न थक्षका नलम प्रसक्त विरक्ति कारण प्लीज चैन तक मुने सुक्त निवृत्ति तक्षकाया साधु में नाचरे न नलम प्रसक्त विरक्ति कारण तक 
शिका Anyone else on the male side? Anyone else? Saha, he, the king. Chintayan, thinking. Itham, like this. Ata, now. Ashwano, heard. Yata, as. Mune, of the sage. Suta Ukta. Uttered by the sun, nirati, death, takshaka akya, in relation with the snake bird, saha, he, the king, sadhu, well and good, mene, accepted, na, not, chirena, very long time. Takshaka, snake bird, analam, fire, vasaktasya, for one who is too attached, virakti, indifference, karanam, cause. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Sri La Prabhupada Ki. So this has a long purport, so I hope you bear with me. Translation, while the king was thus repenting, he received news of his imminent death, which would be due to the bite of a snake bird, occasioned by the curse spoken by the sage's son. What was his name? Yes, Shringi. The king accepted this as good news, for it would be the cause of his indifference toward worldly things. <clears throat> Purport. Real happiness is achieved by spiritual existence or by cessation of the repetition of birth and death. One can stop the repetition of birth and death only by going back to Godhead in the material world. Even by attaining the topmost planet, Brahmaloka, 
One cannot get rid of the conditions of repeated birth and death, but still we do not accept the path of attaining perfection. Excuse me. <clears throat> the path of perfection frees one from all material attachments, and thus one becomes fit to enter into the spiritual kingdom. Therefore, those who are materially poverty-stricken are better candidates than those who are materially prosperous. Maharaj Padiksit was a great devotee of the Lord and a bona fide candidate for entering into the kingdom of God. But even though he was so, his material assets as the emperor of the world were setbacks to perfect attainment of his rightful status as one of the associates of the Lord. In the spiritual sky, sorry. As a devotee of the Lord, he could understand that the cursing of the Brahman boy, although unwise, was a blessing upon him, being the cause of detachment from worldly affairs, both political and social. Shamika Muni, also, after regretting the incident, conveyed the news to the king as a matter of duty, so that the king would be able to prepare himself to go back to Godhead. Samika Muni sent news to the king that foolish Shringi, his son, <clears throat> although a powerful Brahmin boy, unfortunately had misused his spiritual power by cursing the king unwar unwarrantedly. <clears throat> the incident of the king's garlanding the Muni with a dead snake bird was not sufficient cause for being cursed to death. But since there was no way to retract the curse, the king was informed to prepare for death within a week. <clears throat> Both Shamika Muni and the king were self-realized souls. Shamika Muni was a mystic and Maharaj Pidiksit was a devotee. Therefore, there was no difference between them in self-realization. Neither of them was afraid of meeting death. Maharaj Padikshit could have gone to the Muni to beg his pardon, but the news of imminent death was conveyed to the king with so much regret by the Muni that the king did not want to shame the Muni further by his presence there. He decided to prepare himself <clears throat> for his imminent death and find out the way to go back to Godhead. <clears throat> the life of a human being is a chance to prepare oneself to go back to Godhead or to get rid of the material existence, the repetition of birth and death. Thus, in the system of Varnashram Dharma, every man and woman is trained for this purpose. In other words, the system of Varnashram Dharma is known also as Sanatan Dharma, or the eternal occupation. The system of Varnashram Dharma prepares a man for going back to Godhead, and thus a householder is ordered to go to the forest as a Vana Prasta. Vana means forest. <clears throat> and Prasta, one who goes to the forest, to acquire a complete knowledge, and then to take sannyas prior to his inevitable death. But Ikshit Maharaj was fortunate to get a seven-day notice to meet his inevitable death. But for the common man, there is no definite notice, although death is inevitable for all. <clears throat> Foolish men forget this sure fact of death and neglect the duty of preparing themselves for going back to Godhead. They spoil their lives in animal propensities to eat, drink, be merry and enjoy. Such an irresponsible life is adopted by the people in the age of Kali because of a sinful desire to condemn Brahminical culture, God consciousness, and cow protection, for which the state is responsible. The state must employ revenue to advance these three items and thus educate the populace to prepare for death. 
So what are those three? You can raise your hand, please. What are those three items? Yes. Second? Yes. Third? Yes, perfect. Thank you. For which the state is responsible. The state must employ revenue to advance these three items and thus educate the populace to prepare for death. The state which does so is the real welfare state. The state of India should better follow the examples of Maharaj Pariksit, the ideal executive head, than to imitate other materialistic states which have no idea of the kingdom of Godhead, the ultimate goal of human life. Deterioration, uh, deterioration of the ideals of Indian civilization has brought about the deterioration of civic life, not only in India, but also abroad, all over the world, actually. Omagyana timirandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshur unmari tamyena tasmai shri gurave namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto his lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, starting from the translation, <clears throat> while the king was thus repenting, that's the first thing. Here we see that when a person commits a mistake uh, who's self realized and who is free of self love, he repents for his wrong. He doesn't try to excuse it. He doesn't try to ignore it. He doesn't try to disregard it as worldly people generally do. They have a cheating propensity. And the cheating propensity comes out by saying, no, I, I didn't do it. Uh, it was the cause of my stars. It was the cause of this person. He said something. Or it just happens to be that a person was walking here and therefore it caught my attention. Therefore, I did. Never me always someone else, something else, somebody else. Uh, it's difficult to take blame <clears throat> when you have a big, gigantic false ego. False ego means me, 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 I, I, I. <clears throat> What's the last one? Mine, mine, mine. So what does that mean? I'm great, I'm wonderful, I'm glorious, I'm amazing. And anything that tends to discredit or discourage this idea, I don't want to hear about it. Because you're taking away my... Uh, my des uh, the fulfillment of my desire to be important, to be a lord, to be great, to be God. Everyone wants to be a lord of some sort in his occupation, in his family, in the society, in his clubs, uh, in his church. Everyone wants to be big, be great, because that's why we came into this world, to feel as a lord. What does it feel like to be a lord? The Lord gets applauded. The Lord gets praised. The Lord gets glorified. How does it feel? I don't get any of that. Or whatever I get is so small compared to what he gets. I want to taste. I want to feel. I want to experience what God gets so that I can feel like a Lord. This is why we, this is our big era, why we came into the world. Instead of staying in the spiritual world to serve the Lord, to honor the Lord, to glorify the Lord, to play with the Lord, we want to leave the Lord and imitate what he is experiencing so that we can feel this big feeling of importance. This is a big mistake because it leads to tremendous, immeasurable miseries. So, therefore, when we make a mistake, be it small or large, our business is to repent. First of all, to uh, not try to excuse it, but to rather regretfully apologize to the person to whom we have made this mistake. And after we have done that, then we can also give ourselves a little pain and suffering to feel what it is that we gave so that we will not do it again. Very often we repeat those same mistakes again and again because we either forget or we don't know what does it feel like to give pain to another person. And once I know the pain, and I experience the pain, I can identify with that pain, I will not want to do it again, remembering what it felt like on me. 
So therefore, repentance is not merely some mechanical act of saying, you know, I'm sorry, uh, or I'll, I'll stand on one leg, or I'll do an extra five rounds. It's more than something mechanical. It's something deep, loving, and is connected with the Supreme Lord so that he will forgive us. And in forgiving us, our slate becomes clean and clear of that particular sin, and therefore he then continues his blessing. If we don't repent, it's like a mark against us. It's like when you're in school and you do something wrong and, and uh, the, t t the teacher says to you, why did you do that? Or uh, how come you, I didn't do anything. No, I, I didn't do anything. So he said, what do you mean you didn't do anything? We all said, no, no, you're all, you're all blind. You're an illusion. <laughs> so, um, when we, so therefore the teacher makes a note of this and when you get your report card uh, it says where, where it says respects the rights of others it gets a you know, big X there I used to get a lot of those by the way and uh, in fact my mother had to come to school a few times uh, because of the fact that I thought it was a big shot so while the king was repenting he received news of his imminent death which would be due, this is all translation, by the way, which we boot to the bite of a snake bird, occasioned by the curse spoken by the sage's son. The king accepted this as good news, for it would be the cause of his indifference toward worldly things. Yes, most people the normal person, the ordinary person, when they would hear that they're going to die, they would, oh, God, I'm going to leave my mother and my father and my wife, my kids, my, my motorcycle and, and all the other good things that make my life so meaningful. Uh, no, that's not the way a devotee acts. A devotee prepares for this from the very day that he learns to speak. He learns, you know, sometimes he steps on a little bug or, or a mosquito or a fly and, and then the parents say, no more. He gone, finished. It doesn't get up. So we learn about death, and we know that everything which is born one day has to die. And it has to die. But we never know when that is coming. So the king, as I mentioned, accepted this as good news because he would become indifferent to his worldly things. Remember, he had a big palace so many wonderful riches and jewels and opulences in that palace, big gardens, fragrant gardens, had so many friends, so many uh, idolizers, people glorifying the king, thinking the crate is so great, the king walks down the street, long live the king, long live the king. That's what a king gets. Anybody who's seen these motion pictures <laughs> with kings in them, that's, that's what happens. So, uh, long live the king. Why? Because the king is considered to be the representative of God, even in the worldly uh, kingdom. Many think that, you know, King Henry VIII and Charles II and so forth, they're considered, rep until later on, that changed. But during those times, the king was considered to be a representative of God, and the king, generally speaking, could do no wrong. So the king accepted this as good news, and uh, so therefore he could now say, no sense in, if I have any attachment to any of these items, my rings, my, the pictures in the, in the room, uh, the furnishings in the room, uh, my wife or my kids, or any, have any attachment, no sense keeping them because I'm going to be separated from them in seven days. So if I don't work on that now, I'm going to be sorrowful and I'm not going to be thinking of God. I'm going to be thinking of my son or my dog or my cat or my mother or my father or my wife. Oh, I don't want to leave them. <laughs> I don't want to leave. Yeah, that's the mood. That's how I, most people leave the world. <laughs> I have to leave my wife. I just recently, recently somebody whom I have some business uh, connections with and he was becoming a devotee after 15 years of my talking to him. In fact, when I would get on the phone, uh, you know, I, before I would even get any words out, he would see that it's me. He would say, Hare Krishna, Amal, Hare Krishna. He would beat me to it. I said, this guy's making a lot of advancement, a lot of progress. So it appeared. So anyway, um, 
Uh, he even knew a little bit of the philosophy. He, he had become, uh, I would say, 95% vegetarian. Uh, he was doing quite nicely. Uh, in fact, he would spend time instructing me. Of course, uh, trying to be a little humble, I would say very good, very good. But if he made a glaring mistake, I would shut him up. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't let him go on like that because it, it would result or down to his uh, discredit and not credit. Krishna would not like that. So little tiny mistakes I don't worry so much about. So therefore, again, the king could now walk away from the kingdom feeling, thinking, understanding, and willing that building, those furnishings, those relatives, they're not mine. They don't belong to me. It was only an illusion. And any time I thought, mine, 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 I was in illusion. But now I know. They belong to Krishna. They're all Krishnas. And they, I, I, have, I know my only connection to them is through soul. I'm a soul. They're a soul. Everyone is a soul. And as souls, we're all connected, connected to the supreme soul. So in that sense, we're connected. But I, they don't belong to me. I don't own them. You know, the dog, I don't own my dog. I don't own the squirrels. I don't own anything that I'm taking care of. So that's a good thing because he feels free. You know, it's like a person on a hot, hot day and you have all kinds of clothing all over you and you're sweating all over your face and you just want to get rid of those clothes and then someone comes along and takes the clothes, rips them off you and you're just in your BVDs or your little bathing suit or whatever it might be and you feel so much relief. That's the way Pariksha is feeling, I'm relieved. I don't have to think about those things. I don't have to worry about getting them polished or whether they're falling apart or they're going up. I'm, I'm free of all that. No more of that. I have only one thing to be concerned about and that is my relationship with God. So now we go into the purport. Real happiness is achieved by spiritual existence or by cessation of the repetition of birth and death. Yes, real spiritual existence means I know I'm a soul. I know Krishna is the supreme soul. I know that we have a relationship and I know that my business in that relationship is to serve him with love, serve him with sweetness, serve him with all my heart. So that's spiritual existence. Anything other than that is not spiritual existence. It's generally material existence. This is mine, that's mine, this is mine, this is mine, and don't you forget it, and if you forget it, I'll throw you out of here. If you forget it, I'll, I'll cancel your subscription or anything that you f treasure and you possess. So, real happiness is achieved by spiritual existence or by cessation of the repetition of birth and death. So once a person has become fully God-realized, and uh, he has gone back home, back to Godhead. Uh, he doesn't have to come here anymore. It is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita that, um, that a person who has achieved God realization and who has gone back home, back to Godhead, need not come back to the material world again. He's finished with that. Okay? No more birth, no more death, no more gunas, three gunas, no more karma. No, that's what liberation is. No, you're liberated, you're free from those particular uh, strangulations, so to speak. They hinder us. So we, won't ha we don't have that anymore. We, our only business in the spiritual world is to continue lovingly serving Krishna with all our heart and all our soul. One can stop the repetition of birth and death only by going back to Godhead. In the material world, even by attaining the... Ta ta now, one may come back to the material world when one is in Godhead, but not compulsively. Not in a manner where I feel I have to come. But it may come, like Srila Prabhupada, he came to do a service for, for all of us. So Krishna had a nice plan for him to enable us. Otherwise, we would be, you know, picking up the daisies or doing something, uh, just working as a, a non-devotee and just getting all the miseries of material life. But Srila Prabhupada, as he himself said so many times, I am your guru. I am your, guru means heavy. I am the person who will 
who is heavy and heavier than all your material desires. And I will stamp them all out if you just follow my instructions. <clears throat> In the material world, even by attaining the topmost planet, Brahmaloka, <clears throat> sorry, one cannot get rid of the conditions of repeated birth and death. Now that's interesting. In the material world, even by attaining the topmost planet, Brahmaloka, one cannot get rid of the conditions of repeated birth. Actually, they're quite advanced. <clears throat> but there's a problem. Uh, I, I'll come to I might as well read it rather than just tell it myself. And one cannot get rid of the conditions of repeated birth and death, but still we do not accept the path of attaining perfection. The path of perfection frees one from all material attachments, and thus one becomes fit to enter into the spiritual kingdom. Therefore, those who are materially poverty stricken are better candidates than those who are materially prosperous. <clears throat> so those who are materially prosperous, there was, as I said, we came into this world to be lords, to be important, to be glorified, to be, uh, to be honored, to be applauded, uh, to be graced. <clears throat> so as a, as a result of, uh, of that, uh, what happens is that we become attached to all those things which give false meaning to our life. You know, I have a made Mercedes car, okay? So everybody looks at a Mercedes. Oh, he must have a lot of money. He must be prosperous. So therefore, I get attached to it because everybody's looking at the car as I'm passing. Well, you have a Lamborghini or I have a Porsche. I mean, it's even a little higher level. So when people, they look, uh, you feel important. You feel great. You feel glorious. Bad, evil, wrong, no good. Why? Because what it does, it is holds us back. It's an illusion to think you're somebody, you're great, you're glorious, you're wonderful. What only Krishna is, and all glory in this world, which comes to any human being or animal or whatever, comes ultimately from Krishna. Krishna is the source. He's the source of all beauty. He's the source of all wealth. He's the source uh, of uh, his source of wealth. Uh, he's the source of all fame. He's the source of all uh, material knowledge in this world. He's the source of all renunciation or detachment. He's the source of all of us. So when we manifest it, we exhibit it, what that means is Krishna has given a little tiny part of his, uh, his abilities or his talents or his opulences. He gives a little drop to us and we go around parading as if, hey, that's mine. Just see my movement. Just see how great I am. See how wonderful I am. But I'm nothing. And then when we are, when we are somehow or other relieved of those so-called opulences and we begin to cry, oh, no, I'm nobody. I'm just a nothing. Nobody's glorifying me. Nobody's looking up to me. This is madness. If we had not in the first place ever thought that it was ours, that it belonged to us, and understood that it all belonged to Krishna and that we are simply the instruments and servants of all that opulence for the Supreme Lord's pleasure, we would not have that difficulty. We would not be moaning and bemoaning and sorrowing the loss of anything because we would see it as God's will. We would see it that God, God is giving us. He's giving us some challenge. He's giving us some mercy in the form of some difficulty, trial, tribulation. And if we pass the test, we go higher and higher, closer and closer to the supreme spiritual sky. But as long as we bemoan these facts, then we're attached. Ultimately, we should have no attachment to anything in the world. Our only attachment should be to Krishna and his great devotees because they are direct representatives and expressions of Krishna, like Srila Prabhupada. Everyone else and everything else in the material world is just, it's here today and gone tomorrow. And when it's gone, most people just cry and cry and cry. Now when a great soul leaves, we can cry and it's proper to do that. It shows a true and deep appreciation of the greatness of God as manifested through this particular individual. So we are crying for the loss of God's grace. That's good. That's proper. And that should be done. I remember when Srila Prabhupada was right here in this room when it was announced by Ramaswa 
Srila Prabhupada has left this planet. Everybody burst into tears. <laughs> it was about loud, too. And we sat. Nobody could do anything. Devotees, those of you, who was here? Were you here, Druda Karma, at that time? Yeah, remember, devotees were all sitting around. They couldn't speak. They were just kind of shaking their head like this. So That's right. We should moan and bemoan for the great souls, but not at all necessarily for those who only add to our misery by helping us to become more and more attached. I had a situation. I'll, I'll share it with you. When my mother passed on, I'm not going to be able to get through this whole purport, but I think it's important because so many people experience this particular situation. Uh, when my mother passed on, I found myself, first of all, she was a devotee. Everybody knows that. She used to sew in the sewing room and she used to uh, do service for the BBT. Uh, she, would, she would pack envelopes and put stamps and all of these things. So she did that and she would come to the temple usually on, on Sunday and sometimes during the week. So she was a devotee. She chanted Hare Krishna as well. Not 16 rounds, but she certainly chanted a lot. So uh, I had a great affection for my mother. And she also uh, was always asking me, is there anything you need? Whatever you need, it's yours. You want a car? I'll give you a car. You want a boat? I'll give you a boat. You want an airplane? I mean, she was, that's the way she acted towards me. I mean, I, I could not help but feel such affection. I didn't want any of those things. That kind of bothered her because she did, and didn't give her any service. <laughs> so anyway, the um, point I'm about to make is that I started to, I would cry convulsively that she was gone. And after a while, this went on for several days. And I felt a little bit regretful. I felt it was going far beyond the call of devotional duty. So I started to pray to the Lord. Lord, this is not right. This is wrong. Uh, I'm, it seems like I'm putting her ahead or above you. How am I going to stop all this lamenting and crying? And, 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 uh, how, how am I going to stop all this? I mean, I shouldn't go on. I can't do my work. I can't even pray to you. Because I'm moaning for her. <laughs> so I got the answer. He says to me, why are you lamenting the loss of your, uh, of your mother? You're, you're lamenting the loss of the love that she poured into you. But where does that love come from? I was like, I was shocked by the question. That comes from me, and you haven't lost me. So the love that you are crying for over your mother is still with you. The pure devotee is always within the core of my heart, and I'm always in the heart of the pure devotee. The devotee does not know anything else but me, and I do not know anything else but him. So, <clears throat> I am still with you. You still have my love, and you will always have my love as long as you continue in your devotional activities. So you need not cry for the loss of your love of your mother because you've got that love. You haven't lost it. It's only in your illusion that you've lost it. That was a real knockout punch. I really, it was. And I, I kind of like came back to, like, like you're unconscious, you know, when you're in the ring, somebody knocks you out, and then and, and you suddenly come back and, as a, and you see the world around. That's the way it did to me. From that moment on, I never cried over her loss. I appreciated her activities. I appreciated everything she did. I appreciated her devotional service. But I came to the realization, there's no loss. And whenever somebody dies, I realize there is no real loss. As Krishna says, people come into the world and they leave the world. What is so amazing and surprising about this? And why are we so lamenting about this? These things have to happen. Of course, anyone who has given spiritual and meaning and value and help in our lives, yes, we should cry for that because it's connected with Krishna. And when something is connected with Krishna and somehow it's removed temporarily anyway, then we, we have a right to feel denied or de de deprived of this uh, incredible situation. So I'll continue on. I thought uh, it's an interesting story because some of you may, uh, some of us here may find somebody that is going to Leave them shortly. So, uh, does anyone know exactly where I stopped, Archita? He's my uh, page, place finder. If not, I'll just go. I, I see I'm on this page here. Okay. Uh, candidate entering the kingdom of God. But even though he was so, his material, uh, let me, 
Uh, the persons who are poverty-stricken are better candidates than those who are materially prosperous. Those who are, as I just mentioned, those who are materially prosperous, what happens is they become puffed up, they become proud, they become uh, feeling vain, or what they call vainglory. When there's vainglory, what happens when thinks he's something that he really isn't. But Krishna is, and he doesn't have that conception, and therefore he must become miserable, as I've already explained. A poverty-stricken person has much less. He has less to cry over. When he loses something, he loses the house, like they have you know, all these rainstorms and all these fires uh, which are coming up. People losing houses by the thousands, businesses by the thousands. Some of you may not uh, hear the news, but it's amazing. And people, of course, are lamenting because they were attached. So much pleasure in these. But the people who don't have any houses, they just have an apartment. But they have less to lament over because it's only an apartment. And they don't have all the jewels. They don't have all the clothes. And so many things like that. So as Prabhupada is saying here, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so Maharaj Pritikshit was a great devotee of the Lord and a bona fide candidate for entering into the kingdom of God. But even though he was so, his material assets as the emperor of the world were setbacks to perfect attainment of his rightful status as one of the associates of the Lord in the spiritual sky. So that's an interesting statement. Uh, it's mentioned here that they were setbacks, his material assets. So what is being said here is that although uh, for all intents and purposes he was a perfected person, nonetheless, there are still a few strands sticking. You know, it's like if you shave your head, there's still sometimes a few little things that you have to... So there are a few little strands of attachment there, which would not be any problem for him to overcome, especially with, with the Shukdeva Goswami to give him guidance and direction. But sometimes there's a little of attachment, and one may be feeling some grief. One may be feeling some... Uh, uh, some uh, uh, lamentation. One may be feeling some uh, uncertainty, some doubt. So what Prabhupada is saying here, if there are a few strands, and he's mentioning or implying that King Pudichit may have had those strands, then he could overcome them. But a person who is poverty-stricken doesn't have all those possessions and so nothing to really worry about. So, uh, I think I have spoken enough on this particular subject. Sorry I wasn't able to uh, talk about the rest of the purport. Uh, I don't know who, who is speaking tomorrow. Anybody know? Varchita? Who? I, I, I see you pointing, but I don't know which person. Sir? Oh, Svavas, so wonderful. Anyway, if you want to continue... Okay, let me finish. Uh, whoever is speaking tomorrow, uh, if you'd like to continue this purport that I started, there's so much more uh, to, to speak about for the benefit of the devotees here and everywhere who may be listening. So uh, I'll conclude this by saying thank you all very much for listening, for your kindness, and giving me an opportunity to share this knowledge that I have. If any of you have any questions right now, and you want to stay and ask them right now, or make any comments, please feel free to do so. The floor is yours. No? Nobody? Okay, I'm off the hook. Thank you.